This is the iQoo Z7 Pro disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the back glass. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you won't need to take apart the phone to replace those. There are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. On this top plastic cover, we can see an area of graphite film to help transfer heat as well as the LED lights for the aura light on the back of the phone. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The two coaxial cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. Now to remove the main board, there's a single Phillips screw holding it down. Looking at the main board, there's a 2 megapixel bokeh lens, as well as a 64 megapixel primary camera. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. As for the camera connectors, those can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's also a secondary microphone on the top corner, and the liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker over there. Before I forget, there's a rubber gasket around the battery cable connector. Looking at the other side, we can see the 16 megapixel front facing camera, and next to that the proximity and ambient light sensor. There's also copper tape and thermal paste on the back shields to help transfer heat. Now that the copper tape has been peeled back, we can see more thermal paste on top of the processor, as well as a type of heat transfer tape or film on top of the RAM. And here's a better look at the processor with the thermal paste removed. There is more graphite film over the speaker assembly and lower portion of the battery to help transfer heat. There's a mesh filter over the speaker opening. And here's a look at the speaker itself. Once the electric conductive tape has been peeled off, the flex cable is connecting the main board to the subboard, the screen flex cable, the flex cable for the fingerprint reader, as well as the other end of the blue coaxial cable can be disconnected from the subboard. Now there's a single standoff screw which is holding on the subboard that needs to be removed. The other end of the white coaxial cable can now be disconnected. The rubber gaskets around the connectors, as well as the charger port. The primary microphone is located here, 
And there's another liquid damage indicator sticker, which is the white sticker. The sim reader is located on the other side. So if you need to replace the screen, you have to pry off the back plate or back glass. Remove the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and the speaker assembly itself. Disconnect the flex cables and remove the subboard, giving you access to the screen cable. You'd remove the red rubber gasket. Heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. Pry the old screen off. Apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. Both the vibrator motor and fingerprint sensor are held down with some adhesive, so if you need to replace either of those, you could just apply some heat and gently pry them off. There is also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening on the frame, as well as the microphone openings on the top and bottom. And if you're ever worried about puncturing the microphone filter or damaging the microphone itself, both on the top or bottom, on this phone you don't need to worry since both the filter and the microphone are seated above the hole, so if you accidentally inserted the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you wouldn't end up damaging it. Moving on to the battery, there's an adhesive pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. Here's a better look at the 4600 milliamp hour battery. Now that the battery has been removed and the flex cable and heat transfer tape have been peeled off, we have a better look at the large copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located here. If you need to replace that or the buttons, you'd have to gently peel off the flex cable and then lift up and pull out the plastic bracket from inside of the frame. And finally, the earpiece speaker located on top is also held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply heat and gently pry it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put it back together. Once everything is back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.